Alright, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Sky Factory 3. And in the last episode, we upgraded our smeltery. We just added some uh, faucets and a basin and a casting table and added uh, another extra layer to it so that we can fill it up even further. We also upgraded our mob farm to do everything automatically. And as you can see, it is working quite well. So let's check out what we've got in the chest so far. We've got a bunch of stuff. We've, we're starting to get a lot of ender pearls, which is really, really good. We're starting to get some Inferium Essence, which I am super happy about. And we're getting tons of loot bags. I've already got this kind of filled up with loot bags. And I also uh, tried to take out as much Inferium Essence as I could. That way it doesn't get too full and we don't uh, end up stopping production on that so i'm going to take the inferior essence from here because we will uh use we'll need a lot of it later on with the mystical agriculture stuff which we probably will start i'm going to guess within the next five episodes so i keep talking about it and if you guys are actually wondering what's uh going on with talking about mystical agriculture that will be covered very soon we also decided to get every single uh, sieve combination up and running. I've added some crystal chests to them. Uh, that way we can... It's basically just a diamond chest, but you can see through it and see what the main items are in here. We don't really have anything that we need necessarily from the gravel. Maybe the diamonds and emeralds for later on. I think we'll, we will use emeralds for empowering stuff later on. I don't know when that's going to come up. That might be a long while from now but with the sand we are getting our prosperity shards and we are getting our quartz enriched iron dust and then with our dust we're getting lots of glowstone uh lots of redstone lots and lots of gunpowder gold pieces all this great stuff we're getting some bone meal in here and lastly some crushed black quartz which is like another specialty item that only comes from dust sifted in flint stiffened mesh and things are kind of coming in slowly for right now these chests i think would be filled up if we had enough power to do so but you know as you can tell this is getting drained of power all the time some of these are full but stuff like the hammers there are uh, these hammers especially are just always empty i think most of these back here still have some power just because they're not actually doing anything because they have no blocks coming to them because these hammers are running out so we have a solution to that problem and one of them is these conduits are very very slow they're only 640 uh, redstone flux per tick and we want to upgrade that with what we have i think there's stuff in here okay this is this is i think uh gonna be the next episode after this but i've kind of got stuff arranged for what we're gonna do in this episode so i'm going to start out by grabbing some of this stuff grabbing all of this stuff so we've got some brick we've got some conduit binders which we're gonna make to use conduits we've got the energetic alloy that we started smelting at the end of the last episode in our alloy smelter. We've also got a resonator from Extra Utilities 2, and here's the recipe for this, a two redstone, a uh, block of coal iron, and a resonating redstone crystal, which is made by an ender shard for redstone, and the way you make an ender shard is with a glass cutter and an ender pearl, and here's how to make the glass cutter. Really, really simple. All the Pretty much the only limiting factor was the ender pearls there for a while, and this is why I wanted to get our redstone chickens done quickly. That way, we don't have to worry about the redstone aspect. So let's go ahead and grab this out, and the first thing we're going to start on is getting some grid power. So if you notice, Kind of right in the middle of your screen, it says grid power is zero out of zero. Because none of these machines actually end up using grid power. The transfer nodes, the magmatic generators, the pipes, they all are extra utility stuff, but they are free of any grid power. And some things we will use grid power for, let's look up some extra utility stuff, because that's pretty much what it's going to be. Uh, pretty much the stuff that is going to be used with grid power are these uh, upgrade, so a mining upgrade, which we don't really need. I don't think we actually end up needing these just because they were useful in Sky Factory 2, but I don't think we need them in Sky Factory 3 because we have the cobblestone generator blocks. And then we also have the speed upgrades, so the three tiers of speed upgrades, and the stack upgrade, which is probably one of the most important. So we will be using a lot of these and a lot of the stack upgrades early on, but we will need grid power to use them and grid power to make them so the most important block to even get started on all of this is the resonator block that we have in our hand so we're just going to place this down in a nice simple space right in front of our capacitor banks 
which are empty because this is using so much power over here. And like I said earlier, the ex the magmatic generators are part of extra utilities too, so we can add speed upgrades in here, and this will just happen a lot faster. So what we are going to do to generate power is we are going to use the water mill blocks because they are the most efficient way to get grid power per block. So here it is, the water mill. So it gives GP grid power for adjacent flowing water blocks. The higher the level, the more GP. Uh, source full water blocks do not count max power for grid power, which it's not actually for. You can get four per side, so you can get 16 per block. So the first thing we want to do to make the water mills is we need a resonating redstone crystal, which we covered already. We need redstone gears which are just a plank surrounded by four redstone torches, and I've already made uh, enough of these to make two stacks of those, and we also have two stacks of wood and then one stack of resonating redstone crystal, and this will give us one full stack of the water mill. So the water mill also needs stone burnt blocks, which are used in the resonator. So we just put in polished stone and we will get out stone burnt blocks. So let's go ahead and take all of our stone burnt blocks out because that's really the only one we need right now. And then we're just gonna chuck one in there and you'll see a red X because we don't actually have any grid power. We need eight grid power to end up completing the process for one block. And then that will recycle and then we will need eight grid power again. So we need a total of eight grid power, and the way we're going to get that is by starting off with a manual mill, if I can find it on here. I just don't want to type into the little search bar. And here it is. So it gives one GP. So it's just polished stone, resonating redstone crystal, and a redstone gear. So let's go ahead and grab out one of these, or we're going to need four of these. One of these, I believe, one of these, and two polished stone. Also, I don't know if, you've, if any of you have noticed, but the frame rate is a tiny bit better because I got rid of about half of the chickens and made sure I added diamond chests so that I could fill those up and then empty out the one that the item collector is running into, and that way uh, we're not getting the extra entities of the item as items and we only have the chickens that are causing the lag. So let's go ahead and make this manual mill. So we'll need to make the redstone gear first. Grab that out and the manual mill. Here we go. And then also another thing we can make right away are these solar panels and they also give us one GP. So if we find some lapis, and this was not actually planned. I was not going to do this, but let's go ahead and do it anyway because we can. And then we'll grab out six of these, six of these ender shards. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab out 24 redstone. And that way we're not using all this stuff up in the chest and it is a separate thing. So let's go ahead and craft our six resonating redstone crystals. We'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four, and then one, two, three, four. And then we'll just plaster these up top and we've got 12 solar panels and we have an achievement. And it is raining once again. So let's go ahead and go to sleep, see if this rain will subside. I doubt it, but we're going to try anyway. And the reason I actually... Okay, and it the rain actually did subside. That was actually the quickest rain has ever lasted on this world. And the reason I did want the rain gone is because these solar panels will probably not operate at full capacity if there, are, if there is rain going on. So we don't really need, like, a special place for these right now. We can kind of just set these up any which way we like and that'll give us the nine that'll give us nine grid power so we have 12 grid power and we are starting to get our stone burnt so we need six to make our first block of the water mill and i'm going to go ahead and make four more redstone torches and one more wood plank that way our numbers are still correct it's insane that i don't have any wood nearby I literally had to just go to the chicken farm to get all my resources at this point. And if you'll notice in the middle chest right here, we have, we've, by the way, we have a absolute ton of resources at this point just because we have been breeding uh, lots of chickens. I've gotten rid of quite a bit of the diamond, redstone, iron, uh, golden glass, and the steel chickens just because they were taking up so much space uh, on the memory and uh, taking a load on my processor. They got very, very loud all of a sudden, but in this middle one, I've got all of these spaces filled up with one diamond, and the reason for that is, is diamond is my 
uh, most needed resource for the next video in which we will make the colossal chest and I want to make the best possible colossal chest that we have and I'm gonna make it 15 by 15 so we need 15 by 15 for one side and we need to multiply that by six because we have six sides in a cube and so that means we need a total of 5,400 diamonds which is uh, 84 stacks 84 stacks plus 24 and 84 stacks is seven of these rows in a diamond chest and then the 24 extra. So we've got our wood now. Let's go ahead and make our four redstone torches that we used up earlier. We're going to make four of these even though we only need one. Nice. Okay, so yeah, so our resonator is going quite well. We have 12 grid power, so this should not run out as long as we don't add anything else that needs grid power. So let's go ahead and put these back in here just so we again have our numbers correct. Okay, and while we're waiting for this to go on, we can go ahead and start making our redstone, what is it? Redstone gears or whatever. So let's see, we can just pop that wood in there and then we'll just take in all of these redstone and the two planks. So we'll slap the planks in there like that. We're just gonna shift click four rows of these in here and then we're gonna get a full stack of 64 redstone gears. And we'll just do this twice, and then we will need our 64 resonating redstone crystals. And one more thing we might need, if I have some close by, or I can go get some again from the chicken farm, is we are going to need uh, pressure plates. Because to make the upgrade base, we will need weighted pressure plates. So we can probably get two stacks of gold. Let's go ahead and go get two stacks of gold, and then we can make a stack of 64 weighted pressure plates. And then we'll come back, use our extra resonating, or one extra resonating redstone crystal to make another resonator. That way we can have two at a time going, and we can have... I'm going to actually grab another stack of gold. That way we can have our stone burnt and our upgrades going at the same time. So to do that, we're going to need to get nine coal out. Let's see, there we go, nine. We will need two redstone and I believe five iron. So one, two, three, four, five iron. And I may be out of redstone over here, so I'm probably gonna have to go over to the chicken farm. I've got three, so we need two more. And we're getting closer. Once we get that colossal chest and all of this stuff is upgraded, we should be at the point where we can start refined storage and we can have computers and crafting tables and all that stuff uh, all over the place, and we can have our items ac uh, accessible anywhere in the map. So I'm going to take out two redstone. I'm just going to throw those on the ground, and I'm going to grab out... You know, I'll just take the full stack. And I'm going to grab out ten water eggs. And if you don't know, water eggs are made from water chickens, and they're the water chicken's resource. They don't spawn the water chicken, but they're their resource. And what they do, if you'll see the nice little water chicken over here, looks pretty cool, it just looks like water. What they do is they act like a bucket of water, and it'll be very handy for this over here because they all stack very neatly together. I'm going to get rid of that conductive iron because I just don't need it in my inventory. I don't really want to put it anywhere because we're just getting loads and loads and loads of it from the chickens, and I can pretty much waste as many resources as I want at this point. So let's grab out our resonating redstone crystal. Let's go ahead and make our coal block, and then we are going to find the resonator right here. I'm going to make an extra one of them, and I, it's funny that we didn't even need that manual mill. But we're going to put that down. We are going to make a stack of 64 weighted pressure plates, and then we're going to throw these in here. And that's going to need another 8 GP, so maybe we will actually need our mill now. And we need a total of 20, we need a total of 27 grid power, and I don't, I don't know why. I think I'm generating 15 with the manual mill, which is kind of insane. I don't know why, but it's working, so I'm not going to complain. And as soon as we get that first stack of 64 stone burnt, we're going to go ahead and go over to the area behind us, which I don't know if I've shown yet. But I've got it glassed off with this stable glass, and I really like stable glass because what it does is it merges together so it's really quite clear except on the borders. And also, if you break it with a pickaxe, you can just pick it right back up. So it doesn't actually break in like normal glass, and it's super easy to make. Stable glass, so clear stable glass from Sonicore. 
and basically you put in one stable glass to get clear stable glass. It's basically just on preference. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, and you can also put clear in to get the one that looks like kind of normal glass. And all you have to do is put two regular glass blocks in here like this, and you'll get the same one-to-one -one ratio of stable glass. So it's actually really cheap uh, glass, and I really, really like it compared to uh, some of the other ones in the mod pack because there are a lot of glass blocks in this mod pack. So that's the one I prefer, definitely. Like, there's loads and loads and loads of glass blocks. We will probably get into the enlightened clear glass and the dark clear glass later on once we get to it because they will become very useful just for aesthetics and stuff like that so like the dark clear glass we can put on the roof of the mob farm so we can still see into it uh when we make it bigger but it won't disturb any of the light urn uh spawning that's going on so let's check out where we're at on here we have nine more blocks until we are uh, done with our full stack. We are at a total of eight upgrade bases and let me double check real quick While I'm here uh, What exactly it takes to get our speed upgrade so we need okay So gold ingots and blocks of redstone so I may have to grab Quite a bit more redstone from the redstone chickens. Luckily we have plenty. Yes, the audio is working correctly And also I should mention while we're just sitting here using the manual mill, and once you just click on it once, you can go free hands. You don't have to sit there and hold down the uh, mouse button. But what I have done in between episodes besides outside of Sky Factory is I have actually replaced my XLR cable uh, from this one over here, and it's a really flimsy cable. It's not very tight, um, and it has no sort of branding on it. It's just kind of generic XLR cable, so I replaced it with a... Uh, one that literally says high grade on it. It's a lot more resistant cable and it snaps a lot tighter into the microphone base than the other one, which I really like because the problem with uh, my audio in the last few videos, if you've been paying attention uh, to me bitching about that, is that my cable would come loose and then it would make a, a loud enough humming noise that it's going to be annoying. And I have yet to actually edit those videos yet, but I did notice it in the Audacity program that there is a solid black square of just background noise when it could just be a flat line so i think we are done with the manual mill let's go ahead and check out see if we got a stack we do and let's go ahead and just be proactive and i love that the extra utility stuff actually has built-in achievements and it's not um all in the achievement book i can just fucking grab an achievement when I've done something. So we'll put another stack in here just like this, and then we're going to go into our crafting station right here, and we're going to make uh, our first, I think, like 10 water mills. There we go. And we got a little stone burnt left over, which is no big deal. So there is a very specific pattern to actually place these blocks in that will give us the most efficient way to do this. And I don't remember whose YouTube channel I found it on, but I found it a while ago, and I've been using it in every single one of my Sky Factory worlds since I've seen it. So we want to go, this is the middle of our platform. We want to go two out, and we want to place a block right there, and we would just want to do that on each side of this. And then we're going to go in here like this and basically make a diagonal square, a rhombus, a diamond, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to come in here with a uh, water egg, and we're just going to place the water egg. And if you notice, this is running water, so like we said earlier, it has to be running water, otherwise it won't work. So this is generating 8 power, and it's said on the item description, so if we go here, it says the max power is 4 grid power. But I, like I said earlier, that's not true. It's four per side. So we're getting flowing water coming in through here on this side and on this side right here. So we're getting eight. And then we're going to extend this out just like this. And we can place another one right here. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put a torch. Can I not put torches on these? I guess not. We can just put them right there or right there. And then these will start generating power. We are already up to 92 grid power from all of these. So the solar panels are kind of useless at this point as they only generate one. And we don't even need this manual mill anymore because we have got just the base set up. And 92 is actually a pretty good amount. It's about a tenth of almost the total of what we will need throughout Sky Factory. Depending on how large we get with our structures and stuff like that. 
So this is going very, very nicely. And what I'm going to do now, since we have this going as well, is I'm going to go ahead and grab a bunch of redstone. Oh, and I just did something I really didn't want to do. I middle clicked in the chest to sort it. And it moved all my diamonds into one stack, which is fine. I'm just going to take them out anyway. Because we have diamonds coming through here, and we'll probably get a lot more through here once it's all upgraded. So let's go ahead and throw our diamonds in here, and then we want to make as many redstone blocks as we can. So we'll just come in here with this. We'll do that, and we'll shift-click as many as we can. So we get 35. And I think we have right around 35 upgrade bases. So we'll just wait for this last one. Go ahead and take them out. We're going to go into our crafting menu, and then we're going to go into our upgrade speed recipe. And then we should be able to get 35. The problem with these are is they only stack in four. So it's kind of weird, but the tier one speed upgrades only stack in four i believe the tier two the magical ones which we will definitely get to later because they're pretty good those actually stack in i think stacks of 16 and the ultimate speed upgrades stack in stacks of 64 but for right now we are stuck with the speed upgrades and we want to make i believe nine for sure so we need nine for all the magmatic generators so let's go ahead and just shift click all of those in there and then I want one more thing after that, but we can't exactly do it. Actually, you know what we can do is we can just go ahead and upgrade uh, the speed on the resonator so it can hurry its ass up. We can also increase our speed here on this resonator so it can hurry its ass up. And then we can start by putting four upgrades in here and we can make lava. I don't know if you'd notice this. Look at this. So this is, um, it takes... 6.25 seconds to go through a unit of lava. I don't know how much a unit is. Yeah, so 50 lava. So it takes 6.25 seconds. We had one upgrade. It's going to go uh, cut it in half. We had another one that's going to cut it in half. We had another one that's going to cut that in half. And so it exponentially gets faster and faster. So with 64 of these from the ultimate speed upgrades, is going to be absolutely insane. And then we're going to add one more, and that'll make it 1.25 seconds. And then we're just going to go ahead and add all of these to the magmatic generators. And we'll know if this is going to start to be fast enough if our capacitor bank starts to go into the uh, profit. And we can check that by if it goes over 40 or something like that. Right now, Nothing great's happening. But what that does mean is that these are going to be filling with power faster now. So we've got all of our stuff going at once. We've got sieves going. We've got all the hammers going. And these are actually filled with RF. These are not so full with RF, but they're getting it, I think, a little bit more efficiently than they were. So yeah, these aren't like stuck at 40. They're stuck at like uh, 500. So a huge improvement with that. And we'll just start to see a lot more items come out of these. And we want to check our biggest thing with the sieves right now is our prosperity shards like i said earlier in our quartz enriched iron which you only have a one percent chance to get in the uh diamond sieve tier and then those will be used to make all of our refined storage stuff so not quite in the positives yet but let's go ahead and grab the rest of our upgrade bases and we are going to slap those in there like that and we're going to put the last four of these in our magmatic generators so maybe that's just enough to tip it over the edge where it's in the positives it doesn't look like it but we need to go grab some more redstone so that we can make that happen okay so here we are once again back at the crafting station and we want to make where is it right here we're going to go through here here and then here that seems to be the fastest way to do things and then we just want to go here here and here so we've got plenty plenty of speed upgrades now so i think this one needs zero this one needs one and this last one needs four so let's see if we're getting any more we're at 200 out of 2 million now instead of zero so that's a small improvement i don't know that it's gonna help all that much 
as of right now, but still a very, very large improvement. And maybe once these all fill up, if they are even filling up at this point, they are filling up. So they are very, so our auto hammers are where like we're kind of getting stuck and they are slightly, slightly increasing uh, with every time they are pumped with power. And then these are all full because they are stuck. They are basically have a limit on them because this can only go so fast as of right now and this is yeah it's already gotten 4000 rf or fe which is the same thing these are getting there i think these are all full because they are also stuck at an impasse because they're not getting gravel fast enough and these hammers they're almost full i think they're also getting full i don't think we need to worry about these ones as much as the other ones uh, this one is now filling up as well, and we're just going through and double checking to make sure where our power limitations are. So I think it's honestly, I think it's honestly most of the power was just being used by these first three auto hammers, these first 12 auto hammers. And I think we can say the same thing for these ones back here. Let's just double check some random ones. And yeah, these are all filling up with power now. And it should be running quite a bit more efficiently. And if we added some uh, um, compressed diamond hammers to this, it would go even faster. I just don't want to do it right now because it's probably the most boring process ever. And it took me, I think it took me five, three to five minutes uh, when we were actually making the auto hammers to make the first set. And we need three times that to fill it. So now let's throw all of our speed upgrades in here because we don't necessarily need them right now. And we're going to pull out our redstone gears, our last bit of stone burnt and our polished stone. We're going to add our polish or er, polished stone to the resonator. And uh, one thing we can do is we can have both of these running at the same time and get all of our stone burnt done. And probably that first layer of water mills done very quickly and we're gonna place one here we're gonna place one here and then we're just gonna place one in between these two we're gonna place one here place one here place one here 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 and we're just gonna make this kind of diamond square pattern throughout and this is actually perfect size for what we want to do absolutely perfect size because this gives us literally the most efficient way that we can do this and the reason for that is in this corner we can place that last source block and it'll run into these two so the corner blocks and the side blocks are actually uh less efficient than the ones with um water surrounding them on all sides so like this one will only get a total of 12. this one will get 16. i think this one will get 12. i think 12 is the lowest we go but the rest of them should be all fully powered. And then let's go ahead and place some torches down just so we're not getting mob spawn. Mobs won't spawn in water, so I'm not concerned about that. But I am concerned about the rest of the stone. So let's go ahead and double check how much uh, grid power we have. And we have 213 grid power. That's a lot. That's a lot really quick. And then we can also pull these out because these are getting made extremely fast. Look at that. Crazy. And then we're going to go ahead and make some more. We're almost going to be able to make a full 10 again, even though we were just putting them down. So let's go ahead and finish this corner. And pretty much the plan for this is anytime we run out of grid power, we'll just put another layer of glass directly over these, and then we'll build up another sidewall, and then we'll put another layer of all of these water mills on that next layer. So now we're at 268 grid power. So what I want to do next is going to speed things up even more so let's get rid of these and actually you know what's kind of annoying is that you can't vein mine the conduits so if i tried to vein mine it i can't so i'm gonna have to remove these all one by one and that's gonna be a pain in the ass but let's just get rid of those all for now i'm just going to leave this one that's connected there for the time being so we're gonna make three or two different things right now we're going to we've got our three machine blocks and our 24 brick and we're just going to place these in a grid around that and we're going to get a furnace from extra utilities too so if you can guess that means that once we get power into these we can put upgrade stacks in here and stuff will go very very fast when it is smelting so let's grab out three upgrade speeds We'll put them in there like that and then anytime we need to smelt something from here on out it will take i think like 1 64th as long or 1 4th as long something like that or 1 8th i don't know but it's gonna go by extremely quickly now 
And then our next objective is to make our brand new conduits. I would just go ahead and upgrade it to the uh, 20,000 RF per ticket ender, ender energy conduits, but I don't have... Oh, it's only energetic alloy and ender pearls. Interesting, because we have the energetic alloy. We have the ender... We only need three stacks of ender pearls. Uh, let me double check and make sure that's correct. Maybe it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So yeah, so you get one ender pearl, one energetic alloy, makes one vibrant alloy. Let's just do that now. Why don't we just get our 20,000 RF per tick now? We won't need it, but it'll be nice to have later on so we don't have to upgrade it again. And since we have all the stuff to do it now, why not just do it now? So let's grab all of our ender pearls that we can. I don't remember where I put the rest of them. I think I may have made the... Uh, ender shards with them to make the resonating redstone crystals. That looks so cool. How many do we need? We need four. We need four ender pearls. And the game is lagging once again. So there's probably a lot of items that are not getting sucked up at the moment. So we're just going to grab that. And then we will go into our alloy smelter. And then we're going to switch this on to alloys only. We're going to put in our 48, which is exactly what we need. Energetic alloy. And our 16 ender pearls. So we will just have to keep an eye on that. And make sure we come back to it and replenish the ender pearls. Let us check on our stone burnt, and like I thought, it is done. We just add another stack there, and then we're going to come back into here and make our next set of water mills. So here we go with our water mills, and we're gonna get 13, excellent. And then we're gonna come back over here to our water mill farm and place these down just like the other ones. I think that's pretty much all we can do for right now, and then we're just going to wait on our uh, energetic, mm, our ender alloy. What is this called? Vibrant alloy, that's what it is. We're just going to wait on that to smelt and uh, get the last of our stone burnt, which is actually almost done, and then we can finish that up, and then finish the conduits, and then finish the episode. Hmm. And would you look at that? If we look in our capacitor bank, it's actually full now because all of our stuff over here... That's a lie. That's not why that's happening. It's happening because these aren't connected to power because I just disconnected it so we can put these furnaces in. But anyway, we got 2 million power pretty quick. And uh, watch these all go down very, very quickly. Yeah, so these hammers don't even have any power whatsoever at this point. But they will here in a second once we get done with our vibrant alloy smelting. Okay, so the vibrant alloy still has a bit to smelt, but we can make our uh, last of the water mills at this moment. And this I don't think is gonna fill up the uh, entirety of our little platform over here, but it is definitely a good start. So there we have it, we are generating a total of 440 power uh, just from basically only half of this being filled up. And not even all of them have water running to them. So once that happens, we will be getting a lot more power. There's probably going to be a total of a thousand grid power just on this first level. I don't think I've actually made one this large before. So that's probably why I'm surprised with the amount of grid power that we're actually getting at this point. That's interesting. I just uh, learned that if you break the alloy smelter, because I'm realizing that to run these conduits through here, or even just the capacitor banks, I'm going to need this area free, so I've got to move everything up. Uh, move this row up one block. But I notice if you break the alloy smelter, it doesn't get rid of your items and it keeps all of them in here. Uh, okay, that didn't make any, that didn't make any sense at all. Uh, <laughs> what I did was I vein mined the furnaces, but I guess it thinks that the magmatic generators are the same block is the furnace and there we go all is good oh no that's exactly what i told myself i needed to move okay here we go here we go now we're gonna get it right this time there we go Ooh, i didn't even think about that oh i may be in some deep mathematical shit nope i'm good okay so i was wondering since this one it gives you when you make one of these, you have one of each of these in here like this, the conduit binder, the energetic alloy and the conduit binder. It gives you eight enhanced energy conduits at 5,120 RF per tick. And I was, ju I just thought right now that if I make this upgraded one, if it gives you less, like four or two, and then my math would be completely screwed. 
and I would have to spend extra time doing this, which I don't want to do because this is already... Uh, just sitting here waiting for this vibrant alloy to smelt is quite boring. It's not that it's, you know, it's not that this episode is taking particularly long. It's just really kind of boring. We're not, we're not doing a whole lot. We're just upgrading everything so that we can get it done faster. One thing we can do while we're waiting for uh, this to finish up with its last seven ingots is we can start getting rid of all of these. Because this is going to take us a while, actually. And I don't know why I didn't think of this before. And here we go. The last one right on time. Just to, wait. What? Oh, okay. It's got one more smelting. I was like, it ended with 47. I'm like, no, I need 48. Can't be done yet. And there we are. Here is 48. So we're going to go into our crafting station. Hit our ender energy conduit. And we will make two stacks. So just like before, we're going to connect all of this together. Together. Okay, let's go through and double check that everything is hooked up and I see one last issue and We are going to fix it just like that. So that should be the end of Everything we need to do in this episode, but I'm confused as to why the basic capacitor is still at 2 million If that's the way it's gonna stay then that's fine But I just want to make sure that everything is indeed getting power. This has full power this has full power. This does not have any power. Ah, there we go. I found the issue. And there we go. That should be all of the ender conduits laid out. Let's go ahead and double check. Again, it's staying at 2 million. I don't know why. Because I feel like these should be using a lot more power than they're using. Maybe we just hit that sweet spot where everything is just fast enough to work completely properly. And fix all of our choices in the last episode i think that is what's happening everything seems to have power everything's to be seems to be working just fine so this is working at almost max efficiency and the reason i say that is because just like earlier we can upgrade and put hammers in there we can also enchant the hammers and add efficiency to them that would help us out a lot. And then also we can enchant the sieves. But we're going to leave that for a later date because I really don't want to do that right now. What I do want to do right now is actually in this episode. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.